Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering Aunt Jemima's Revenge, company to close plant after deleting iconic brand. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. Coming from Breitbart, Quaker Oats shutters Danville plant, 500 plus workers lose their jobs. This is the same company that just a few years ago decided to eliminate the popular Aunt Jemima brand. From Breitbart, Quaker Foods to rename Aunt Jemima scrub logo to make progress towards racial equality. As if deleting a famous brand is going to somehow make equality happen throughout the world. Well, they did that, but obviously the sales aren't what they should have been because now that the brand is gone, they're consolidating and closing down a plant. Of course, the people that wind up paying the price for this are the 500 workers that aren't going to have a job anymore. And they're not the only lunatics. Do you remember this story? Land O'Lakes to remove Indian woman from packaging after 92 years. This was another company that decided, you know something? We can't have a Native American woman on the front of butter packaging. Even though it's famous, even though it's been around for 92 years, there's just something wrong about it. What would be more fair? What would be more equal? Well, how about this? What if you take the Indian off the land and then you get rid of the land? They actually did this. They didn't just get rid of the Indian woman. They got rid of the Indian woman and the land. This is from landolakes.com. If you see this picture, it looks like a Babylon Bee Joe. Farmer owned Land Lakes since 1921. No more woman, no more land. So somehow deleting people from society makes you politically correct. From Breitbart, Quaker Oats shutters Danville plant 500 plus workers lose their jobs. The Quaker Oats company announced Wednesday it is permanently closing its factory in Danville, Illinois, with upwards of 500 employees to be impacted. The News Gazette reports Mayor Ricky Williams Jr. confirmed the news to the wider community with city officials saying, Today we learned that after 65 years of production in Danville, PepsiCo will close Quaker Oats effective June 8th, 2024. That doesn't seem like a lot of notice. It's April now, that's June. So what? how much time are you giving these people to fix their lives after you've destroyed them? Not a lot. The business has already ceased production, but will continue to pay their employees through that time. Ah, that's generous of them. It, it, this is terrible, it, completely unnecessary. While this shocks and saddens us, we will unite as a community to help those who have lost their employment. I understand business to some degree. I understand that People do need to make a profit when they operate their factories, but I don't understand destroying iconic brands and then having to shut down plants, whether it's a year later or a couple of years later, it's the employees that are paying the price for this. And it's nice for the mayor to make a statement saying, we will unite as a community to help those who have lost their employment. What about PepsiCo? They're a multi-billion dollar company. Quaker is a big company too. PepsiCo actually owns Quaker. They make a profit at it, I assume. So why can't they step in and take care of these people? William said he is unsure whether any of the affected employees are being transferred or if they're all being laid off. Well, it doesn't sound like he's very well informed. A mass layoff, quote, has a terrible impact on the employees and their families, he said. It also causes some anxiety to the community at large as well. Yeah, because those people that lose their jobs and now can't support their families can't spend money they're not earning. So it affects everyone else working in the actual community. Chicago-based Quaker Oats, a unit of PepsiCo since 2001, opened the plant in 1969. In recent years, the Danville facility manufactured Quaker Oats granola bars, but it had also made cereal and pancake mix. In a statement, Quaker Oats said that after a granola bar recall in December, they decided it was best to consolidate manufacturing of the product in a newer facility. But we do not make this decision lightly and recognize the impact it will have on our employees, their families, and the Danville community. I guess you can't just switch to having them make Aunt Jemima pancake mix again and have them make Aunt Jemima syrup because you don't make that product anymore. You have a no name looking replacement product, a product that has like no personality to it. This is the replacement product, Pearl Milling Company. Okay, whatever. I would never recognize that as not being a generic brand. And that's why they can't turn their employees over to making this instead. They continue. We have notified our workforce and are closely working with our employees and local community officials to provide a supportive transition. Well, maybe they'll switch their genders for free. Now, this statement that they made here that they had a granola bar recall in December. Okay, yeah, that's an issue. 
It's not an issue sufficient for closing down a plant. They say they have a newer facility and they want to consolidate their manufacturing. And I understand that it does make sense with respect to controlling cost and controlling production processes to have it all done in one place. Usually the capacity in a plant, especially a newer plant is not being fully utilized so they can close this plant where their average cost was higher than it probably is in the new plant. And instead of producing their product at the older plant and paying more to produce it on an average basis, they can pay less to produce it, moving the production into their new plant and having it essentially be at like a marginal cost. So it's much cheaper to make some extra with more efficient equipment than it is to make additional quantities at another location. This looks like a money saving thing to me. If their brands were doing really well, they would not be shutting down their plants. And here's the details on them being forced to shut down the plant. From the News Gazette, update, closure of Quaker's Danville plant prompts rapid response. The Quaker Oats Company has confirmed that it is permanently closing its factory in Danville. More than 500 employees will be affected. The business has already ceased production, but will continue to pay their employees through June. While this shocks and saddens them, they will unite as a community to help those who lost their employment. How are they going to do that? The coalition said they're working together to support Quaker Oats employees and their families, such as by updating a list of local job opportunities and discussing training opportunities to help workers move into other local positions. The company could actually be doing that. They don't really need the local government to be doing that. The company should be doing that. It's not like they can't afford it. William said he's unaware whether any of the affected employees are being transferred or if they're being laid off. Quote, it's going to be a blow to the community, said Mike Marin, president and CEO of Vermilion Advantage. And we've had a lot of challenges over the last few decades in this community. And this is just the latest one. And it's not welcome news, but we're going to do what we have to do and we're going to get through it. According to the FDA, Quaker Oats issued recalls of several granola bars, cereals and cereal bars in late 2023 and early 2024 due to potential salmonella contamination. Well, that's not good. You don't want salmonella contamination. Quote, following the Quaker recall in December 2023, we paused production at the Danville facility, the company told the News Gazette. After a detailed review, we determined that meeting our future manufacturing needs would require an extended closure for enhancements and modernization. In order to continue the timely delivery of Quaker products trusted by consumers since 1877, we determined production would need to permanently shift to other facilities. So they're saying that the plant is actually a complete and total disaster. Well, it's your plant, Pepsi. You've owned it since 2001. Why did you let it get into this condition? You can't really blame the employees for the terrible condition of the plant. The company said it recognizes that closing the factory will have an impact on its workers and the surrounding community. <laughs> You'd think they might notice. But we've notified our workforce and are working closely with our employees and local community officials to provide a supportive transition. Quote, if there's nothing that we can do to prevent this, then we have to do whatever we can do to assist the employees who are going to be in a very tough period of transition because there's a lot of good people here, Marin said. And we want to keep those people in this community. We want to keep them employed. They're not going to be able to stay in the community, just being realistic. 500 jobs in a small community is a lot of jobs. So it's not like they can be just absorbed physically, locally into the community. Not to be negative, it's just... They're not being realistic about it, and they should tell people what they're facing. It's going to be very difficult. This work will likely include sharing helpful resources and assisting employees with getting the training they need to secure other local jobs, he said. So these employees actually have to be retrained to go work at another job. So it, this is going to be a long process to try to locate job opportunities and then retrain people to be good potential employees for those job opportunities a lot of people are going to fall through the cracks, even if the job opportunities are really there. And I'm doubtful that they would be there, or they might mention a couple of these companies specifically that they already started working with to integrate these local laid off people into those positions. But they mention no company names that I see here. But when we have mass layoff events, such as the one at Quaker, we kind of shift into rapid response mode, said Chuck Jones with Vermilion County Works, which administers federally funded Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act Title I-B programs. Jones has been in touch with state officials about the situation, and the state is working with Vermilion County Works to set up meetings for affected employees to learn about resources such as unemployment benefits assistance, local social services, and retraining. So their lives are completely up in the air now.
The organization is also applying for state funding to help Quaker Oats workers who are interested in going back to school to learn how to do something new or seek retraining in a high-demand, high-growth occupation. He went on to explain the state has emergency funds set aside for situations such as this one, and they're working with the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity to apply for those dollars. It would be nice if they kind of coordinated all this before it just dropped on these people's heads. Here's how they got into the situation in the first place. From Breitbart, Quaker Foods to rename Aunt Jemima, scrub logo to make progress towards racial equality. Aunt Jemima was replaced by the Pearl Milling Company brand. The brand is not compelling, it has no personality, and of course it has no history. In the top right-hand corner of the box, it says, formerly Aunt Jemima, as if that's going to help them sell this product. Obviously, it's not working. Quaker Foods, the company behind the Aunt Jemima brand of syrup and other breakfast foods, says it will rename this line of products and discontinue its label's image of a black woman to make progress toward racial equality. Not racial equity, racial equality. This was a few years ago, so they weren't using equity everywhere. If it was today, they'd be using equity. Aunt Jemima has been featured on these products for 130 years. NBC reported on the development. From NBC, the picture has changed over time, and in recent years, Quaker removed the mammy kerchief from the character to blunt growing criticism that the brand perpetuated a racist stereotype that dated to the days of slavery. Quote, we recognize Aunt Jemima's origins are based on a racial stereotype, Kristen Kropfel said. Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer of Quaker Foods North America, she said the company has worked to update the brand to be appropriate and respectful, but it realized the changes were insufficient. As an example of consumer expectations, NBC quoted Rache Richardson, an associate professor at Cornell University, who said Aunt Jemima is a retrograde image of black womanhood on store shelves. It's an image that harkens back to the antebellum plantation. Aunt Jemima is that kind of stereotype premised on this idea of black inferiority and otherness, Richard said. It is urgent to expunge our public spaces of a lot of these symbols that for some people are triggering and represent terror and abuse, he declared. Quaker said the new packaging will begin to appear in the fall of 2020, and a new name for the foods will be announced at a later date. NBC reported the company also announced it will donate at least $5 million over the next five years to create meaningful ongoing support and engagement in the black community. That $5 million you could have given to those 500 employees who are now out of a job. The purge of Aunt Jemima comes after a wave of municipalities across the United States, removing historical monuments for similar complaints of racial insensitivity. Crowds of protesters have defaced or even destroyed statues of notable figures from the Civil War era, Confederate States of America, founding fathers, veterans, and even abolitionists, people who were trying to get rid of slavery. The current unrest was sparked by a string of racially charged killings, Amon Aubrey in Georgia, Breonna Taylor in Kentucky, and George Floyd in Minnesota. Mere weeks before this unrest, as the Black Lives Matter movement organized protests across the nation, some of which descended into violent riots and looting, tensions flared again after Atlanta police shot and killed Rayshard Brooks. Mere weeks before this unrest, another food brand removed a long-standing label icon over perceived racial insensitivity. Lando Lakes announced in April it would remove the likeness of a Native American woman from its butter products after 92 years. I can't tell you for sure that the reason this Danville plant is closing is because they blew off and destroyed the Aunt Jemima brand. I do know that a brand that has a lot of history to it that consumers are very familiar with has a tremendous amount of value. Could they have continued to produce Aunt Jemima and make a significant profit? Absolutely they could have done that. That's beyond question. It's an interesting contrast to see these 500 employees being cut from this plant that they're closing are getting a lot less specific attention and thoughtful announcements than the people that insisted that they destroy and eliminate the Aunt Jemima brand. Not only did they wipe out the brand, but they donate $5 million for progressive ideals. How about donating $5 million or maybe $15 million to these employees so they can try to make a new life for themselves. Because depending on a factory job, even if the factory has been around for 65 years, or depending on a company like Land Lakes that's been around for 130 years, might not be such a good bet anymore. These big companies can't be trusted. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you again soon with another story. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.